Over 30 years ago, a colleague and I were asked to read through, analyze, and look for patterns in a massive amount of anti-Mormon propaganda. It was drudgery. It was laborious. It was depressing. It carried a bitter and draining spirit, and consequently, I had to just push my way through it to complete the assignment. After a period of addressing certain questions, my partner shook his head and indicated that the bitter and hateful spirit of the materials, along with the constant barrage of issue after issue, was simply wearing him down, and that he wasn't sure he could stick with it. I suggested that we were almost done, that a few hours more would be sufficient to make our report. He stared at me for a moment and then asked this question. This isn't damaging to you, is it? I mean, you don't seem to be very upset by what we're reading. I assured my friend that there were obviously many other things I would rather be doing, and that the vicious and contentious spirit did in fact weigh on me. But no, no, I wasn't particularly bothered by it. Why? He followed up. I can't say for sure, I replied. It's ugly, but no, it does not shake my faith. Twenty years ago, I was in <coughs> conversation with a friend of mine, a friend of another faith. She began to ask about my impressions of some anti-Mormon videos on the Book of Mormon and the Book of Abraham that had recently been released. I indicated that I had, in fact, seen them and put them away. She asked, Bob, this doesn't cause you to wonder if you're believing in a fairy tale? Of course not, I replied. This doesn't make you doubt that Joseph Smith was a prophet, she inquired. Not in the slightest, I said. She then added, I just don't understand you. Later that night, as I laid in bed, I rehearsed that conversation, which reminded me of one that had, 30, that had taken place 30 years earlier. I asked myself, why am I not unnerved by attacks on the prophet Joseph, the church, its leaders, its teachings? Why don't these things challenge my mind or get to my heart? I still wasn't sure. I sat with my wife in our living room as we watched the April 2007 General Conference. As I usually do, I took notes that would help me remind me and my students of what was said, at least until the May end sign came out. During the Sunday morning session, Elder Neil L. Anderson, then of the 70, began his remarks by relating the very touching story told by President Gordon B. Hinckley in the April 73 General Conference. He told of a young man, a young Asian man, who had joined the church while in the military and now faced the sobering realities of ostracism by his family and, and foreclosure of future promotion in the military. Are you willing to pay so great a price for the gospel? Elder Hinckley asked. With his dark eyes moistened by tears, he answered to the question, It's true, isn't it? President Hinckley responded, Yes, it's true. To which the young officer replied, Then what else matters? Elder Anderson told that story. He continued, The cause in which we are laboring is true. We respect the beliefs of our friends and neighbors. We're all sons and daughters of God. We can learn much from other men and women of other faiths and of their goodness. Yet we know that Jesus is the Christ. He is the resurrected Lord. In our day, through the prophet Joseph Smith, the priesthood of God has been restored. We have the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Book of Mormon is what it claims to be. The promises of the temple are certain. It's true, isn't it? Then what else matters? Elder Anderson asked. Then came the following words, words that have changed my life. They have provided answers to the question, why doesn't anti-Mormonism affect my faith? Elder Anderson said, faith is not only a feeling, it is a decision. With prayer, study, obedience, and covenants, we build and fortify our faith. Our conviction of the Savior in his latter-day work becomes the powerful lens 
through which we judge all else. Then, as we find ourselves in the crucible of life, we have the strength to take the right course. That was it. That was my answer. Faith is a decision. Decades ago, I made a decision. I determined that God is my Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Redeemer, my only hope for peace in this life and eternal reward in the life to come. Joseph Smith is a prophet of God, I decided, through whose instrumentality the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, the Pearl of Great Price, many plain and precious truths, the keys and covenants and ordinances of the priesthood and the organization of the church have been restored. Because I knew these things to be true, I made a decision, a crucial decision. I decided that I would be loyal to the constituted authorities of the church, that I would not take offense when there came either an inadvertent or even an intentional ecclesiastical elbow, as Elder Maxwell used to call it. I decided that I was in this race for the long run, that I would stick with the good ship Zion and, and that I would remain active and committed until I was safely dead. No man or woman would ever chase me out of the church. No unresolved issue or perplexing doctrinal or historical matter would shake my faith. Now I suppose some would respond that I'm either living in denial or simply naive to troublesome problems. I assure you that I am neither. I have been a religious educator for 40 years. I am a voracious reader. I am very much aware of seeming incongruities like that the pop up here and there. I spend a goodly portion of my time with people who are of different faiths, and some of them are ever so eager to bring to my attention questions intended to embarrass me or the church. There are just too many things, however, about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that bring joy and peace and profound fulfillment to my heart, light and knowledge to my mind and a cementing and a sanctifying influence into my family and my interpersonal relationships, for me to choose to throw it all away because I'm uncertain or unsettled about this or that dilemma. To put this another way, for me and for many, many responsible people, when it comes to the truthfulness of the restored gospel, the whole, W-H-O-L-E, is much, much greater than the sum of the parts. <laughs>